So another surface of revolution is uh, we'll just take a straight line parallel to the z-axis, rotate. It's what are you going to get? A circular cylinder, right? So one of one in the list we we didn't look at at that time. So this is just x square plus y square equal to one in in R three. It represents a cylinder. There is no restriction on the z z coordinate, right? So only the x and y coordinates have to satisfy this. So they always lie on a circle. Circles parallel to the x y plane right so stack one circle on top of the other so you're going to get the cylinder we'll come back to this later so this is what is called a helicoid you have heard of helix a curve called helix So you have the cylinder, just spiral which winds around the cylinder, right? So this is the three-dimensional version of that, surface version of that, this is a helicoid. You might have seen uh, what are usually referred to as uh, uh, spiral staircases, right? So those are precisely this uh, helicoids. Take something like this. What does this give you? So always points lie on some circle or the other. Take z. If you fix a z, you have the unit circle at the at it lies on the unit circle at that level. You don't get the whole circle, so but it keeps winding like that. Of course, helix is uh, famous from other contexts, biological context. What is called DNA is the structure of DNA is what is called a double helix. So the famous uh, Watson and Crick, they got the Nobel Prize for that. But actually, the person who first found out the structure was uh, uh, um, Rosalind Frank, I think Rosalind Franklin. I'm not sure about this, but this certainly is. So, as happens many times in these awards, whatever level, awards at whatever level it was, Nobel Prize or Field Medal, anything, always there is some thing involved. Anyway. So, the point was, of course, that uh, Watson and Crick did not even refer to. Rosalind's work. So all the basic work was done by her. Okay, so we'll be coming back to more examples as we go along, various contexts. Uh, maybe I'll give you one example of an N surface and N plus one uh, space. It is not usually discussed in any of your books. Uh, rather not n, n and n plus 1, but n, n square and n square minus 1. Let's look at, let us look at it, a lower dimensional case. Look at all 2 by 2 matrices. Mm, real.
So, what is the dimension here? This is R4, right? So, four dimensional. Look at X here. Determinant is equal to one. So, okay, let us write a two by two. So, X one one. So, this is a matrix. So, what is the determinant? 2 by 2 matrix. So, x11, x22 minus x12, x21 equal to 1. So, you can think of this as all points in R4 satisfy this condition. So, this is a 3 plane in R4. This is a level surface, right? f of x11, x12, x21. So, instead of writing x2, x1, x2, x3, x4, we write like that, okay, because you have matrices, is this one. So, all points where f is 1, so this is f inverse 1. So, the level surface, but we have to check the regularity condition again. So, you have four partial derivatives, right, with respect to each of these variables. So, what is, so let us write 1, 1, 1, 2, so on. So, del 1, 1, f is x2, 2, right. Del 1, 2, f is minus x to 1. If all of them are 0, then what will happen? You get the 0 matrix, 0 in R4. But that cannot satisfy this condition, right? So every point, therefore, is a regular point on SL2. So every point So, what is the conclusion? This is what we have called SR three surface in R4. Because there is nothing special about 2 here, you can take any matrices of any order. So, M and R. The dimension is n square for the space m and r. There is only one condition, only one degree of uh, constraint there. So, this is going to be an n, minus, n square minus 1 manifold, sub manifold of this. So, uh, again, the same kind, kind of argument. Derivatives, but tell me now, so how do you? Say, here we had two by two, we, so we explicitly wrote down the determinant x11, x22 minus blah blah blah. But you so, and differentiated, okay? So how do you differentiate a determinant? So if you have a
a denominant like this is a function of m square variables, right? So, if you want to find, for example, how do you do it? Can you write down what this is? What this partial derivative is? You know how to expand the determinant, right? Rows by rows or by columns or whatever. So, how do you expand? 1, 1 times the n minus 1 by n minus 1 determinant. x minus, uh, I mean, x11 one one will, will it occur in either place? Every time. So, if you expand by second column, there will be an x11. One one. So, writing down these things is but, but how do you differentiate without expanding? Have you seen it anywhere? Or you have any idea about how to go about it? Okay, you think about it. Okay, you come back to this. You spend some time on trying to see how to do it. Okay, so expanding, you won't end up anywhere. Right? It's complicated calculations. But without actually expanding the determinant, how can you differentiate this function, determinant function? We'll do it in a slightly different context shortly. But so try to think about this, how to go about it. Okay. Now, in any case, so the conclusion here is the same as before. SLN R is is an n square minus 1 surface in r n square okay, or m and r. So, we also defined tangent vectors yesterday, right? So, let us recall the definition and try to calculate some tangent vectors as in n surface, always this will be the p the point in S, v, so let me use the notation that was used yesterday. So, this is PV, right? According to yesterday's what Dr. Main used. This is a tangent vector to S at P if there is a, a parametrized curve. Alpha. Alpha is easier for me to write rather than gamma. Gamma, if I write it is gamma or R or what? So I write alpha. Such that uh, alpha on S. That means alpha t lies in S for every t, such that alpha 0 is p and alpha prime 0 is vector v. So, we, we are using this uh, arrows for tangent vectors and vector fields, right. So, he is using that, so let me also use that. Normally, I don't write. So, just to distinguish between the point V and vector 
V. So elements of the tangent space are vectors. Right. So now the point here is uh, you have essentially proved this, but we will write down the proof time. So all tangent vectors at tangent vector to S at the point P, right? So, we will write TPS instead of all tangent vectors to S at P. The result is that this is nothing but gradient f at t, the orthogonal complement of the gradient. The gradient is what? What is f? From the definition of s. So, s is equal to is the level surface of the smooth function f. So, f is not mentioned, it is always like that, okay. So, level surface given by the function. So, this is the gradient of f. So, this is just the partial derivatives, right, del 1 f at p, del n f at p, the vector. So, at least one of the partial derivatives is not 0 by definition of regularity. So, this is uh, no one dimensional space, right, del f p is p variable. So, this is so, the orthogonal complement of non-dimensional subspace in Rn plus 1. So, it is an n-dimensional subspace of Rn plus 1. Right? So, The orthogonal complement in Rn plus. See, from the definition of a tangent vector, just by looking at the definition, it is not even clear whether it is a vector space. Right? If you add two tangent vectors, are you going to get to. That is not obvious from the definition. But once you have this, you not only see that it is a vector subspace, but you even know what its dimension is. So, this is of course called the tangent space at P to the surface S. Yes. Geometrically, so this is a subspace, okay. So, if you in Rn plus 1, so it, it, it passes through the origin, right. If you look at the sphere, uh, any matter. So, if you look at the tangent plane at a point P, it, it is it passes through P, not right. So geometric tangent plane is different from this tangent plane. So what, what is the relation? Geometric tangent plane will pass through the origin. So it's just a translate of that. So translate this actual geometric tangent plane to the origin. To get the this tp, so this is a translate of so the the geometric tangent space at p to s is translate of this by p. See, remember TPRN plus 1. What was TPRN plus 1? So, all pass P comma vectors in Rn. So, it is the same. P cross Rn plus 1. So, it doesn't pass to the origin, right? So, it is Rn plus 1 with origin shifted to P essentially, right? So, it is exactly the 
thing which happens to the subspace here. So, this is a subspace of this, if you look at that way. So, if you look at Tp Rn plus 1 as Rn plus 1, then Tp is a subspace of Rn. I mean this. So, always the translate is involved because subspaces have to contain the origin. So, from the point on the surface, you come back to the origin. So, let us compute some examples of tangent spaces. So, example. So, that uh, so you do not see in your books. Um, so, We will prove this subsequently, but it is quite simple. In fact, if you remember the integral theorem on integral curves, existence in Aikner's uh, maximal integral curve proved yesterday, the last part of that, if you look at the proof, it is more or less one, one part is just uh, chain rule, the other part is almost the same as the proof of part 3 of that here. We will write it down sometime later. <coughs> okay, let us again first look at 2 by 2 case before we pass on to the general case. Hmm. Let us try to compute space to this at the identity matrix. To make uh, things simpler, let us take the identity matrix. So, what is T i? So, for this what do you have to do? So, what is a tangent vector at the identity? So, you have to first take curves through identity the tangent vectors. So, first let us try to look at some curves in SR2, right? Curves in SR2 are 2 by 2 matrices depending on the parameter alpha 1 1 t, alpha 1 2 t and so on, right? The curve in SR2 is of the form the components are this, okay? And with the condition because the determinant condition is there. Two alpha to one equal to one at every point for all t, right? So give me some examples of such things. Let us first look at some examples of such curves. Here, okay. So, for example. Right? A power t is 0, 0 a power minus t. The determinant is what is alpha 0? So, this is your alpha t. Alpha 0 is identity matrix. What is alpha prime 0? I have to differentiate these things e power t 0 0 minus e power minus t right uh, evaluate at 0 1 0 0 minus 1 right so this is one tangent vector equal to r Give me another curve. Rotation, right? T sin t minus sin t cos t.
Okay, for this also, alpha zero is identity. Then alpha prime zero, alpha zero is i. Alpha prime zero is uh, what? Zero zero one minus one. Zero. Is that right? Is there any property common to this and that? Here one and minus one are the eigenvalues, right? What is the sum? Zero. So what is zero in this case? What is the sum of eigenvalues? Is the trace, right? This also has trace zero. So you make a wild guess that all tangent vectors are going to have zero trace. But is that true? Or can you say the other way? If you if if you have a matrix whose trace is zero, then it is a tangent vector. There are two things, right? One statement every tangent vector has trace zero. The converse, every trace zero matrix gives you a tangent vector. Both look look to be true. Which one looks easier? See, starting with uh, any matrix, how to get an invertible matrix? For example, look at the exponential. Remember the exponential that we discussed uh, as an application of the inverse function theorem. Okay. So e power x is uh, given by the usual series for any matrix, any n by n. This is no pr problem about convergence, it's absolutely convergent, convergent, whatever. And so if you want a curve, just put a T there. Right? Alpha T defined as fix a, fix an X, take alpha T to be e power T X. Okay? In general, of course, this is a non-singular matrix. E power X is always invertible. E power X into E power minus X is identity. So, e power tx is invertible so alpha 0 it passes through the identity matrix e power 0 is identity matrix what is alpha prime 0 x e power tx so this is going to be x Alpha prime t is x times e power tx. I'm leaving some of this for you to verify. We had done this earlier in one of the classes when we discussed inverse function theorem. <coughs> so alpha prime 0 is x. So you get that this shows, for example, that x is an arbitrary matrix so every n by n matrix is a tangent vector at the identity to to for example all non singular matrices right this is always non singular so this is a curve in glnr
But now we are not uh, interested in GLNR as it is, because GLNR is not uh, uh, surface in our sense, right? It is an n, n square dimensional manifold in n square uh, dimensional space. So, so you want this to be in SL2R. So when does this belong to SL2R? or SLNR. Meaning, when is determinant of e power x equal to 1? For what x? Right? But what is determinant of e power x in general? If x is a diagonal matrix, for example, what is e power x? What will be the powers? What is x square? Lambda 1 square, lambda n square. So x power k will be lambda 1 to the k, lambda n power k. So everywhere you will get powers of the diagonals only. So you get diagonal matrix again. So the diagonal elements will be e to the lambda 1, e to the lambda 2. What is the determinant in this case? e power lambda 1 lambda n. This is nothing but e power trace of x. This is for a diagonal matrix. What about a triangular matrix? It is not diagonal but triangular, so does not matter, Some something is there instead of 0, but still the determinant is going to be the same, right, even for a triangular matrix. Right? What I have to write, determinant here, right. So, for a triangular matrix, the determinant of e power x is e power trace of x, right? What about a general matrix? Any matrix can be triangulized. Not all matrices can be diagonalized, but all matrices can be triangulized, which means what? There is some whatever A such so that A x A inverse is triangular. What is the exponential now? You have to add the powers of this, right? This is sigma a x a inverse power k by k factorial. But what is this? A x a inverse a x a inverse so on. So all this a's which lie in between will cancel off leaving you 
A inverse on this side, A on the other side, in the middle you will have only the x's. So, will x, 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 k times. So, this is A inverse, or oh, A this side, okay. A x to the k, A inverse. So, this is right. For any matrix, if you which is similar to a given matrix, if two matrices are similar, they have the same everything, Diag uh, right? Eigenvalue, determinant, trace, everything. So, determinant of x is going to be so. Determinant of a x a inverse, I mean exponential of this is going to be this is a triangular matrix. So by what we have said here, it's going to be the trace of a x a inverse, right? But the trace of a x a inverse is same as trace of a, right? So. Hmm? So, uh, all these quantities are invariant under similarity transformation. So, determinant is also going to be the same. Determinant of this is also going to be determinant of a power x. So, what is the conclusion? So, this and this will have the same determinant. So, that is the same as the trace of this. That is the same as trace of x. So, the conclusion is that determinant of e power x is equal to trace of x for every x, right? e power trace of x. So, if you come back to our example, we are in SLNR, so determinant is 1. So, if the trace is 0, if trace of x is 0, then determinant of e power x is 1, right? So, if trace x equal to 0, then determinant uh, sorry they are then e power x is in sl and therefore of course the curve e power t x is also in for every t the same thing is true trace of t x is t times trace of x so, so, in this case, alpha t equal to e power t x is a curve, parametrized curve in SLN. Through alpha 0 is i and the so alpha prime 0 is x as before so what have you proved if you start with a matrix of trace 0 then it is a tangent vector right so x has trace 0 trace x equal to 0 implies x is in Ti. Or what is the same? If you look at all x in M and R, trace 0, so this is contained in 
the tantra space i said nr okay yeah so we have one enclosure what about the other enclosure suppose you have a curve alpha ijt this is in sln r right what can you say about alpha prime zero how, how do you calculate so now again this is an sln r which means that determinant alpha ijt is equal to 1 what does this give you if you differentiate both sides so alpha 1 1 t alpha 1 n t alpha n 1 t alpha n n t this determinant is 1. So, differentiate with respect to t now. So, this side you have 0. So, let us bring it on this side is equal to now back to the same kind of problem that we encountered earlier. How to differentiate the determinant? You know the definition of determinant as a, as a sum. I mean, this is just you were, the way you expand the determinant. But was it sigma minus one to the power sigma, sigma varying over all permutations? No, you don't know that. Anyway, so let me not get into that now. So how how to differentiate this? I will give you the rule, you see whether you can prove that, okay. So once you, I mean one, you can try to prove that only if you know the definition of determinant. Write down the expression for a determinant, okay. So anyway, so what you have to do is, so you have entries here, so each of them is a function of t, right. You want to differentiate with respect to t. So, differentiate one row at a time and add. That means, so first differentiate the first row. So, what are you going to get? Alpha 1 1 prime t, oh dash, I keep writing dash for dot, okay. Alpha 1 n prime t. I will keep the rest as they are, as alpha 2, 1, t, whatever, whatever. So, you have then nothing to the other rows, you have just differentiated the first row. Plus, you do the same thing for every row. Differentiate the second row, keep the other rows the same. The last term will be alpha 1, 1, alpha 1, n. Blah, blah blah alpha n minus one one alpha n minus one n alpha n one prime alpha n n prime so this is going to be sum of n determinants got by differentiating row one row at a time so i mean this <laughs> of course now, instead of uh, looking at one determinant, we have to calculate n determinant. But we are to simplify things, we calculate it at alpha equal to 0. Right? We want only the tangent vector at the identity. So, evaluate at 0.
tangent. So alpha zero is I. Okay. So you want to see what alpha prime zero is. So alpha 0 is i. If you evaluate this at 0, what are you going to get? First row is something, uh, each evaluated at 0, but what about the other terms here? The diagonal terms are all going to be 1, all other terms are going to be 0. So you are going to get something like, the, I mean this determinant is of the form alpha 1 1 prime 0 blah blah alpha 1 n prime 0 and then 1 1 1 like that and 0 everywhere else. So this determinant is now is a triangular matrix so just the product of alpha 1 1 prime 1 1 1 1 1. So this first term is just going to give you only alpha 1 1 prime 0 and uh, same way so this is going to give you alpha n n prime 0. So this is a tangent vector this is your x right. So what do you get therefore alpha 1 1 prime 0 plus etc alpha n n prime 0 is equal to 0. On the other side you have 0, okay. But what is this? Alpha prime 0 is x. So these are the diagonal elements of x. This is x 1 1, x n n, right. So, this is just the trace of x. So, in other words, what? If a vector, if, if a matrix x is a tangent vector at 0, it has zero trace and conversely if we have seen the earlier uh, the other way if you have a matrix of trace zero then it is a tangent vector right so so x is in ti sln implies trace of x equal to zero that's what we have arrived at here conclusion therefore combining this with the earlier one uh, we are going to have that the tangent space at the identity to SLNR is the set of all matrices of zero trace. So we have at least calculated one good example of a tangent space. So you can also observe something here. So, so what do you know about the trace function? Trace gives you a linear functional on the space of all matrices, right? And the, the null space or the kernel of a linear functional what do you know about that? The null space of a linear functional, non-zero, okay, it's not a zero functional, then the null space is going to be a hyper subspace, one dimension less than the whole space. So this is going to be an n squared minus one dimensional subspace of all of Rn squared or M and R. Okay. Of course, this we know from what we have said because we have Realize this as a tangent space, so it, it is of dimension n square minus 1. 
but you observe that just from the fact that trace of x equal to 0, I mean, uh, it gives you that it is a linear functional, kernel of the linear functional, uh, trace functional, so has dimension n square minus 1.